Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be looking at an example of deep learning using the H2O package. And in this example, I'm gonna show you how to set things up so that you can test your own ideas. What I'm gonna be doing in this tutorial is summarizing options data. So I'm gonna be taking the average of the implied volatilities for the calls and the puts, the daily changes in open interest, volume, and a few other factors for each of the trading days. And we're gonna try and see how well it can predict the stock return for that day. So we're gonna begin by requiring some packages here. So I'll run through this block. Now to save us some time and calculations, I commented out these lines, but essentially all it's doing, it's grabbing my options data from my database. We're gonna be taking a look at Tesla options year to date. And for each of the trading days, I'm gonna take all the option chains available and summarize the data. So I'm gonna go ahead and import that in and we're gonna take a look at that table. So let's take a look at our option summary here. So again, for each of the trading days year to date, we're gonna take the average call implied volatility for all of the option chains that day, the average call delta, theta, gamma, vega, the average volume to open interest, the total call open interest, and the total call volume, the average return for all the call options, and then it'll repeat for the puts. So again, we have average put IV, the delta, the theta, the gamma, the vega, the average volume to open interest for all the puts, the total put open interest, the total put volume for that day, the average put percentage. We're also gonna return the stock price, the percentage return for the stock, the percentage return for the open interest, the percentage increase or decrease for the call volume and the put volumes. So in the model, I'm gonna adjust this table by dropping a few columns that are not necessary, and we're gonna try and predict the percentage return for the stock. So back in our script here, we're gonna normalize and split the data. So we begin by initiating our H2O cluster by specifying the number of threads and the max memory size. Next, I'm going to select the columns that I need. So I'm gonna copy all except for the actual levels for the volume and the open interest and the stock price as we have percentage returns for those and I thought those were unnecessary. So I'm gonna condense my table, save it into options data. Now, like I said, I'm gonna be passing in all of the columns except for the percentage return of the stock price, which will be our response or what we're trying to predict. And in this package, we need to convert our data to an H2O frame. And we do that by running as H2O, passing in our options data frame. And then we can split our data into training and test sets by using H2O split frame. We're gonna pass in our H2O data frame and the ratios should be less than one. 79% of the data will be training and 20% will be for testing or validation. So let's go ahead and run this block. Now that we have that set up, we can see that our connection was successful. And now we can actually use our deep learning model by running H2O deep learning. Our X's will be the predictors, Y will be the response. We're gonna pass in our training data frame, our validation data frame, and a few other parameters needed in this function. And once we run the model, we're gonna summarize it and print out the results. We're gonna make predictions by passing in our model and our test data frame or validation set. And we're also gonna print out the root mean squared error. And finally, just shut down the H2O cluster. So let's go ahead and run this block and see the results. The table that I found most useful is this last one, which gives us the relative importance of each variable. It looks like for this example, the average call percentage change had the highest importance. If you sum the percentage of this last column for all the variables, they should all equal one for 100%. Now we're gonna go ahead and plot the RMSE. So we'll take a look at that. So these are the number of steps versus the RMSE, and it stopped after 50 steps for our training data set for which it was minimized. And we also see our error on the validation set. Now let's take a look at the actual percentage return of the stock versus what it predicted. And we're also gonna create a confusion matrix. So I'm gonna combine our percentage return for the stock versus what it predicted into results. I will then add two columns to check and see if the direction was accurate in order for us to use a confusion matrix. So if the stock return and what it predicted is greater than zero, we'll add a one, otherwise it'll be a zero. And this will help us gauge whether the model got the direction right. We will then create a confusion matrix and plot the accuracy and then finally just return the results. So if we run this block here, we'll take a look at the printout. All right, so for the confusion matrix, if we sum the total of good instances by the total number of rows, we get a total accuracy of 90%, which is pretty significant. It only had one instance of a false positive. If we take a look at the table, we can see the actual results. Here we have the actual stock return versus what it predicted. Some of the predicted values seem to be very close. 
to the actual stock return. And in some instances, we see that they're fairly spread apart. One of the reasons why the accuracy is so high is because we're trying to predict the stock price given at the end of the day using the options data at the end of the day. What would happen if we shift the percentage return of the stock for the following day? That is, what if we pass in today's options data and try to predict the stock price for the following day? So I created a separate script for that sole purpose. And if we take a look at the confusion matrix in that one, we see that the signal accuracy drops to 54%. So the accuracy does drop significantly if we're trying to predict the next day's return by using end of day options data. What would make sense to me by using this first model is if I apply it in real time where we can make calculations in real time and see how well that fits in predicting the stock return for that given day. But that's something I haven't tested yet, but just throwing out some ideas on how I would go about using this first model versus the second one. And in case that helps with your own testing. Well guys, this concludes the video. I hope this was useful information. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.